OK, so we said we're going to now think about these different summations. And if we wanted to find out the sums of something that was more complicated like this, we've got, as I was just saying, it should have been bracketed. Sometimes I've been lazy and haven't put the brackets. So if you spot that, tell me off. And we were going to say, how would we find this? And Andrew's suggestion was to find the sum of the series from 1 to 13 of just r, and then to triple it. But then you said to add 4. But I think we need to think now, if this is in brackets, what we might do differently if it's in, if it's in brackets. And then 13 times 4, because you're going to have 4 coming on 13 times. So rather than doing, um, rather than actually working out the way that it was suggested by Andrew, which is mathematically going to be identical, we just kind of break it down in a slightly different way, because you're going to find that that will have some advantages. So this series that we've got here is the same thing as doing the sum from r equals 1 to 13 of 3r plus the sum from r equals 1 to 13 of 4, which makes sense, right, that you can split a series in that kind of way. And then I'm going to split this further. I'm going to take out a factor of 3, because if everything inside the summation has been multiplied by 3, that's the same thing as working out the summation and then multiplying it by 3 afterwards. So you can pull the 3 out to the front to show that you're going to do this bit first, and then you're going to multiply it by 3 that we have like this. So this is what it means uh, by breaking up a summation. We can take it like this, and we can split it into 3 multiplied by r uh, plus the sum of the, the extra constant bit that comes on at the end. And once we have it looking like this, it's going to be pretty straightforward about what we want to do here. So we would have 3 multiplied by, what would this part be? A half of 13 by 14, because that's a half n m plus 1. And what's the sum from r equals 1 to 13 of 4? 52. 52. 13 times 4. Remember, it's just this multiplied by n. Yeah, 30, it is right, 52. 13 times 4 is 52. And then all we need to do is put that into the calculator, and we find out what we've got. So let's see, what's that going to be? 39 times 7. Yeah, I'm getting my calculator. Monday morning is, is when I'm probably the least impressive in terms of my arithmetic, and it's the time that I see you guys. So you're going to think I'm, I'm bad at arithmetic. And so the answer to this, 325. OK? So I'll just give you a chance just to jot that down. And so I think it was Andrew that said this last time, but Andrew was like, um, you know, when we, we might have said r equals 1 to n of 3r plus 4, and he said, oh, could we just work out a formula for that one? And I was like, yes, you could work out a formula for what that might be. But you can see by doing this process here that we don't actually need to work out a formula for specific series. All we really need is the formula for this bit that we've got here. And by working out what that thing is, we're able to do much more kind of complex looking kind of series that we have. So that's why we don't end up coming for formulae, uh, trying to find out formulae for more complicated ones, because we take the complicated ones and we break it down into bits that actually just, just work a lot easier for us. OK? So we'll do um, a couple more examples here. These are kind of like a part A and a part B kind of question that we have here. So let's start off with this one that's on the left-hand side. And we're going to show that the sum of, again, this should have been bracketed, um, the sum of this between r equals 1 and n plus 2 is equal to 2n brackets n plus 2. So I'm going to begin by saying that from r equals 1 to n plus 2 of 4r minus 6. Marco, would you be able to say what this is written in its kind of broken down form?
Yep. But the oh, you can do that. You can do this without brackets. Yep. You can just put a big four outside the front, knowing that it's being multiplied. N plus two on the top. Yep. N plus two on the top. Good. You could, if you wanted, have had the minus in there and a plus on the outside, but I prefer the way that you've written it. I prefer to say that it's minus that bit that we've got there. Okay? Doesn't it always need to be an actual number? You, no, the bit that goes inside here could be anything because you're, you're either adding on negative six N plus two times. So that's, that's okay. And then we're just going to dive straight in with what the, the formula might look like. So this one is going to be 4 from the previous bit, and then we have the formula. So it's 4 multiplied by a half. n in this case is n plus 2. And then n plus 1 is n plus 3. Does that make sense? Yeah? And then what will this bit here? It's going to be... Uh, just six, 6 multiplied by n plus 2. So it's going to be minus 6 brackets n plus 2, like this. So I'm just going to tidy this first bit. So we've got 4 times a half. So that's 2 n plus 2 n plus 3 minus 6 n plus 2. And we just want to do that last stage now of simplifying this. By simplifying this... Um, what should I do? How should I simplify this? Uh, take the, the common factors. And the common factors are? Two, n, uh, two brackets n plus two. Two brackets n plus two. And then I'd probably do square brackets to show I'm factorizing with another bracket. What should then go inside the next bits, Theo? n plus three. Yep. Minus, six, uh, minus three. Minus three. Why is it minus three and not minus six? Because you've also taken out the 2. So you've got the 2 times the, the minus 3 to get the minus 6, which is just then 2 n plus 3 minus 3 is n. So it's 2 n brackets n plus 2, which is what they wanted at the start. OK, so now it says, hence evaluate the sum from r equals 10 to 102 of 4r minus 6. What does the word hence mean when we're talking in, like, in maths? What does that hence mean? Yeah, using, like I said, this was like part A of the question. It kind of means using part A. They sometimes say hence or otherwise meaning you could do it a different way. But if it ever says the word hence, please try and use what you've previously done because it's like a pathway that they're trying to lead you down to get to the answer. So before we actually can use this, what do you notice about this that's important to, to be careful of? That r equals 10 to begin with. So if we could break this down into just the two, the, the bit where we're subtracting them, what would it, what would it say? We'd have 4r minus 6 and 4r minus 6. What should the numbers be here and here? Uh, the first one should be the, the average. So this one should be up to 102. So it's from r equals 1 to 102 minus r equals 1 up to? Nine. Good. It's going to be up to r equals 9. Because we want it to start at 10, we're going to remove all the ones that go up to 9. Okay. So for this first one that we have here, if we're going to now be able to use this formula that we have, what is the value of n that we're going to use for this first one? Uh, not 102. If you look for this particular version of the formula, n is actually 100 in order to be able to use this. Okay. So actually in this one, we're going to use the value of n for the particular formula that we have over here is 100. And for this one, our value of n is going to be 7. Now that because what's, sorry, let me just, before, before we do that substitution, the reason we have to use these values of n is because this formula down here only works for this particular setup that we've got, which started with an n plus 2, okay? So what we're going to do now is substitute these values into this. So we would have 2 multiplied by 100 multiplied by 102 
minus 2 multiplied by 7 multiplied by 9. Don't know why I've suddenly switched to a red pen, but I have. So that is 200 times 102 minus 2 times 7 times 9. And the answer is 20,274. And they love to do these kinds of questions where part A of the question is setting you up with finding a specific formula and then part B of the question is taking that formula and applying it with some numbers just so that you, uh, so they're testing that you've understood exactly how those formulae kinds of actually work. So we're going to have a look at exercise 3A now, the second half, because the second half of exercise 3A allows you to break up some of the summations as well, okay?